In the workshop, a Mark Traction Engine, Part 6, Examining the Safety Valve and Fixing the Water Gauge. In the last episode, even though the pressure went up to nearly £100 per square inch, the safety valve didn't blow off. The spring is far too strong, and here it is in pieces on the bench, and as you can see, this spring is ridiculous. It was not the one that was fitted to the engine when it was new, and a spring of this thickness is absolutely no good when there's such a small ball on the seat inside the safety valve. It would take a lot of pressure to lift this small ball off the seat with that spring above it. The construction is very simple. The ball is held onto the seat and you can adjust the top part of the safety valve to set the spring tension, but that is if you have a spring that will actually flex. Before I started work on this engine, I gave the boiler a quick hydraulic test of £100 per square inch. Then I pumped some compressed air into the boiler and I did notice at that point that the safety valve didn't lift. The ball was reluctant to lift off the seat even when I pulled the central plunger using a pair of pliers. So when I did the initial steam test I just kept my eye on the pressure gauge and I knew that the boiler was safe up to £100 per square inch anyway. As a comparison of the spring strength I'll show you inside a couple of small safety valves that I have that would normally be okay for boilers of this type. The principle is the same, there's a centre plunger and an adjusting ring which is used for adjusting the tension of the spring but if you take it all the way out, you can see the mechanism inside. This is another kind of safety valve, and again it's a very small one. Safety valves of this type are referred to as express safety valves because there would usually be two of these fitted to a small model express railway locomotive. And here you can clearly see what the problem is. In my left hand is the spring out of the express safety valve, which is a commercial item, and the spring in my right hand is the one that was fitted by someone to the safety valve on the traction engine. I fitted a new spring, which I found in my box of small locomotive and traction engine safety valve springs. And as you can see, this safety valve is blowing off OK now with this spring fitted. This will allow me to steam test the engine properly, but I'm going to recommend to the owner that he contacts Markey and buys a new safety valve for the engine. I do not want to be held responsible for any problems that occur with this one that I've had to modify. This next job turned out to be difficult. It was a very necessary job to do because the water gauge just didn't work. So first of all I removed the top cap, now I'm removing the top fitting. I had to break the glass to get it out because it was really stuck very firmly into the fitting, mainly due to the excessive amount of lime scale that was in the actual fitting. In this clip I'm cleaning out the top fitting, first of all using a reamer and then with a piece of wood. I could have put it into my acid bath, that would also have got rid of the lime scale, but doing it this way was easy enough and it got rid of the lime scale which is what I wanted to do. Even after cleaning out all of the lime scale, the glass was a very tight fit in the top part of the water gauge. I don't really like the idea of this. And here's the bottom fitting and it's very very solid with lime scale. And when I mean solid, I mean really solid. As you can see with the scriber, I'm poking the lime scale out. But it's not giving up the fight easily. The best way to do this would just be to put it in my acid bath. So why didn't I put the fitting in the acid bath? Was the acid bath occupied? No, it wasn't. I just thought I would do it this way so you could actually see me cleaning out the fitting. Because just looking at a video showing two hours of an acid bath wouldn't be very interesting. Unless, of course, body parts repeatedly floated to the surface of the acid bath. But that's enough talk of bodies in acid baths. The fitting is now cleaned out. I can blow compressed air into it from both ends. On both the top and bottom fitting, I applied a small amount of Loctite 542 before I re-screwed the fittings into the back head. This job was very fiddly. I don't often work with things quite as small as this. And sometimes I wish my hands were very small and delicate. That way I could get them into much smaller spaces. With both the fittings in position, the glass is very tight. I'm not happy with how tight this glass is. This glass is 4mm in diameter, so I enlarged the holes in both the top and bottom fitting to just give it a bit of clearance. I can't really fit the glass today because the piece I have is too small, but on Monday morning I will go to Blackgates Engineering and buy a new piece. But I'll temporarily fit this piece of glass just for the video. And that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.